There's spoilers ahead. Be warned. So I've wanted to make a video over Hell's Paradise for quite a while now, but I never really knew what specifically to make it about. And now that the anime is here, it's made me remember just how much I actually enjoy and love this series as a whole. From the beautifully crafted world and story to the intricate and interesting characters and relationships, I think that Hell's Paradise is right up there with one of the best mangas I've ever read, and it's sure to make for one of the top animes of the year. It's one of those stories where every single character that gets introduced could be a main character in another story, and the perspective constantly changes from group to group, making it feel like every character is a main character, even though the real main character and goat of the series is Gabi Maru the Hollow, who might just be one of the best main characters in any series. But the sheer amount of top tier characters and antagonists throughout the series is just unparalleled throughout manga in my opinion. Most of the characters in the series are split into two separate groupings, the criminals and their handlers basically, and the criminals are tasked with retrieving an elixir of life for a pardon from their crimes, but only one of them is granted the pardon. Which initially will make you think that it's more of a battle royale type series, but it's not at all. It kind of starts that way, but very quickly they realize that this isn't an ordinary situation and they're actually going to have to work together in order to even get to the point of returning home. Which is just a beautiful subversion of expectations because you go into it thinking they're just going to wipe each other out until only one of them is remaining and then return for the pardon. They expected it to be a really quick mission in and out and we're done, but that is very far from the truth. But with half of the characters being criminals and the other half being executioners, it develops a really interesting tension between every character until they start actively working together, and even then there's still a lot of tension between them all, because they can never truly trust each other in this situation. Except for a few characters that aren't really following the rules and have their own agenda. Which again is just another little wrench that makes it really interesting. Especially when you have no idea what any of these characters are capable of doing throughout the entire series. Even at the end of the series, you still don't know if you can trust half of them, because they're just literal criminals who have played the entire game in order to get their freedom. It's just genuinely some of the best content ever in my opinion. I absolutely love when characters have questionable moralities throughout the entire series and you never really know which side they're playing, but you always know that they're trying to benefit themselves the most. And that makes it so much better when it gets revealed that some characters are specifically trying to help other people and are willing to do whatever it takes to help them. Initially all of the characters either seem like they're way too focused on justice and doing their duty, or they're just complete criminals that have no real sense of like righteousness or anything of that nature where they're just kind of morally correct people. Like they're fucking criminals for Christ's sake. But as you get to know each character more and more you realize that there's a lot of gray area. Like obviously there's a few of them that are pretty big criminals but like they had their own reasons for doing most things and honestly they're all just really solid characters trying to live their best lives. They might not have been dealt the best hand in life which pushed them into the criminal path line but like for the most part I don't really think you can blame all of them. They definitely all lean into being criminals more than not, but for the most part they're operating in that morally gray area where things aren't necessarily as they seem. And with the story being mostly in that gray area, it's honestly one of the places where I think stories can just thrive, especially when you have characters that lean more into the darker side of things. It's probably extremely obvious at this point, but I've been avoiding using any names specifically, mainly because I'm really bad at pronouncing names and have to do multiple takes in order to even get it somewhat coherent. But also, I just really don't want to spoil anything specifically for each character, because if I say this character did this, then it kind of ruins it. But if I say a character did this, there's a lot of characters throughout the series, you know? But now I kind of just want to talk about specific characters and why I actually like them so much, so forgive me for any mispronunciations. It's actually really difficult for me to sit down and pick any favorite characters out of the series because I really do like every character individually, but I really don't feel like sitting here for half an hour talking about every character specifically in detail. So I'm going to limit myself to a couple characters that I really like. And the first character that I wanted to go into a bit more detail with is Chobe, or as I like to call him, the edgier Bakugo. And initially, when I first saw this character, I immediately thought he was going to be the antagonist and it was going to end up being Gabi Maru vs Chobe at the end. And to not spoil anything, but it definitely feels like that throughout the series until the end. Like legitimately up until the final couple chapters, I thought they were going to do another 
180 and have him actually be the antagonist the entire time. Because even throughout the latter half of the series, he is actively working with the actual antagonist. But obviously he's doing it to benefit himself and whatnot. But he is such a fucking crazy character throughout the entire thing. Like, his entire goal is to protect his younger brother, who he sees as a little kid, but eventually they come to terms with the fact that, like, they're more equal than not, and they can actually, like, fight together. Which is just a beautiful moment between the two, but I think the younger brother is just a bit more lacking in general. Whereas Chobei is a very independent character and is willing to go off and do his own thing in order to achieve his own goals. He is by far the edgiest character of the series with all of his cuts and scars and he, he just looks really fucking cool. But he might be one of the most sadistic characters throughout the entire series. And just an absolute monster. And an actual monster too. He is the only character that becomes more of a monster as the series progresses. He's also the only character that gets actively laid in the series. So I got you know, that's pretty cool. He's just immediately one of the coolest characters in the series because he's so visually appealing and just all of the shit that he's had to go through in life to get to this moment where he then just actively goes further and further into madness trying to gain more and more power to get out of the situation and to become strong enough to protect his brother no matter what. I absolutely adore the character. But he's not quite the best character. I think that Gabi Maru is just phenomenally better. The one downside to Gabi Maru is the fact that he isn't as villainous as the other characters in my opinion, which is something that I personally would just have liked more if he was a bit more menacing, even though he's immediately one of the like most dangerous characters in the entire series. One of the things that makes Gabi Maru so impactful as a character to me is specifically his like drive and motivation throughout the entire series. Because he starts off as this basically emotionless character that is just trying to die, but for some reason he's just incapable of death. But then he meets Sagiri, and she basically figures out that he doesn't really want to die because he has something that he wants to get back to, which is obviously his beautiful life. It makes things very difficult throughout the series for him to do that. But throughout the entire series, his goal is to get the pardon so he can go back to her. Which is such a simple and beautiful motivation, but at the same time, it's not as simple as it seems. Because later on, you find out she might not exactly be real. Which is one of the biggest wrenches that gets thrown at you throughout the entire series. Because up until that point, his motivation has never been in question, because he is blindly trying to get back to his wife. But then when you find out she might not be real, and it might just be an illusion that they manufactured in order to keep him in line, well, then things get really interesting. And that's something that I really love about the series. Gabi Maru looks at all of the evidence laid out for him that his wife might not be real, and decides it does not matter whatsoever. Whether she's real or fake, it's irrelevant, because he feels that it's real, and he's going to blindly charge at that to find out if it is or isn't. Either way, that's his motivation and he's going for it. And it's that blind determination that really made me fall in love with the character. He has so much noise throughout the entire series trying to cloud his judgment, and he just realizes that it doesn't really matter what other people think is the real situation. I feel like it's somewhat uncommon throughout storytelling that characters have such blind motivation to reach such a specific goal to a point that they're willing to give up anything they can in order to hit that goal. And Gabi Maru is willing to give up literally everything for the slimmest chance that his wife is real. And I love that. It's something that I often compare to Full Metal Alchemist with Edward's determination to get back Alphonse's body, where he's willing to do basically whatever it takes in order to return his brother's body. But obviously I think there's a big difference between the two, where Edward isn't willing to cross too many lines, where Gabi Maru is willing to cross just about every single line as long as he can get back to his wife. And people say romance is dead. But I guess that's not exactly true because there is a moment of hesitation in the final confrontation where the antagonist of the series kind of mentions something that hits a little too close to home for him and he has a moment's hesitation and that just about costs them everything. Which gives him a little bit more humanity than he had originally in the series because at the beginning of the series he is just a straight up badass assassin who is willing to cut down anybody who he has to. 
until later on where he starts growing morals and realizes this is probably not a good idea to start cutting down everybody I'm told to for no apparent reason. But that was then and this is now and he is trying to get home as quickly as possible. I could have and probably should have made an entire video dedicated to Gabi Maru specifically because he is literally just one of those characters that I really fucking like. He's just written in such a perfect way in my opinion that it's impossible not to completely fall in love with him. He might be the most basic looking character of the entire series, but he's still one of the most fleshed out and interesting characters in the entire series, which makes sense because it is the main character. But this is a series where every character is extremely well made and just has enough to make their own story. And I just really think that Gabi Maru stands leagues above everyone else. But I would be lying if I said there wasn't someone who was a very close second for me personally. And that is Shija. And in order to explain him a little bit, I need to explain the fact that Gabi Maru isn't necessarily Gabi Maru. Because they come from a village of elite assassins, they needed something that struck fear into people, and the alias of Gabi Maru the Hollow was born from that. The most, like, brutal and unforgiving assassin of them all would carry on the name Gabi Maru the Hollow in order to continue the legend of his, like, brutality and strike fear into other people. So every Gabi Maru would pass the name down to the next, and after the current Gabi Maru, Shija is technically the next in line. But since Gabi Maru still technically has the name because he left the village rather than passing it down, technically Shija can't become the next Gabi Maru until he kills Gabi Maru. And he doesn't really come into play until like the end of the series, which is something that I find a bit disappointing just because I adore this character more than any other character for the amount of time that he was there. Because obviously I'm going to lean towards Gabi Maru and Chobe because they got so much more content and you got to actually know those characters more. But with Shija, he's one of those characters that just immediately caught my attention. And if you know the type of characters that I love and adore, you can immediately understand why. Because he is an absolute insane monster. I think that he is like the perfect Gabi Maru in terms of like striking fear into other people. Because he is absolutely ruthless throughout the entire series. And when we actually meet Gabi Maru in the series, he's already past that point in his life when he was the Gabi Maru. But I think that she just still sees him as that version, even though he's long since grown from that person. Because I think up until he started falling in love with his wife, he was a more perfect version of the Gabi Maru that they wanted. But I think during the series, Gabi Maru just has way too much humanity inside of him, whereas Shija has very, very little and is willing to do basically anything. When it goes into his backstory and like Gabi Maru's childhood, you get to learn that Shija was completely obsessed with him, like from day one, to the point that he was killing other children for Gabi Maru. But he is like completely obsessed obsessed with and idolizes Gabi Maru. He might be the character in the series that loves Gabi Maru the most, which is just something I can relate with. I think if Shija had more content revolving around him, he would definitely have taken my number one spot. And having him versus Gabi Maru be one of the like climactic parts of the series is just such a good moment where they're fighting to the death but they're completely in sync because they know each other so well. And it's almost like that best friends turned rivals turned bitter enemies that is just so rampant throughout anime and manga in general that it's just one of those stereotypes that's done really well every time in my opinion. And in this story it still delivers, but I think it has a bit more weight than other series. And before I get to the last character that I wanted to get more in depth with, I just wanted to mention a quick few opinions on the other characters in case anyone was curious. I think that Yuzuriha has one of the best character designs in the entire series and she is just a beautiful badass throughout the entire thing who is very good at manipulating people into getting what she wants with very little effort. I'm about to butcher the fuck out of this name. Tamiya Gan Tetsusai is a character that heavily reminds me of Kenpachi, uh, for obvious reasons, but he's just absolutely obsessed with fighting the best people, even though he's kind of stupid. Nurugai shouldn't even be there and it's kind of bullshit that she was forced into this situation, but at the same time, she's coming out on top with Xion being her new guardian, which is awesome. And the two of them are just adorable together, I love them. But in a way of like, they should just be far away from this place and be happy somewhere else. Chobei's brother Toma is interesting, but I don't think he was as good as the other characters. He was kind of a bit boring with a heavy emphasis on my brother can beat you up. 
type vibe. But him eventually coming to his own and realizing like he's his own person and doesn't have to live in his brother's shadow the entire time and do things that he actually wants to do and try and help his brother out rather than just sitting back and letting him take care of everything else. He probably has some of the best character development in the series if I'm honest. But for some reason it just, he doesn't stand out to me enough. All of the Tencent dudes were pretty cool in terms of like antagonists. They're all really interesting and had their own little quirky bits and Mei was absolutely adorable out of them. Uh, the other ones were just kind of standard monsters that had their own personalities but for the most part they were just kind of the same thing, I guess. And for the Yamada clan, like, just to go through a couple of the ones that I really liked, uh, Isuzu had a really nice character design, I really liked her, but I feel like she didn't really do a whole lot. Tens is pretty cool, but I feel like he didn't really get a whole lot of content either. But he was certainly one of the better Yamada clan members. Aizen has a really nice design, but I don't think there was enough content for him to make me actually care about him. But that can also be said about basically all of the early characters. Genji had a really nice design, but he was just kind of a dick. I actually really enjoyed Senta, but he was a, he was a simp. But he was a pretty nice character overall. I really liked Fuchi's design and thought he was a good character. And he was just kind of put in a bad position at the end. Pretty unfortunate. And Jika? G Jika? I, I don't fucking know. He would have been one of my top characters too. Just because he seemed like a hyper-intelligent, like, manipulative asshole. Which is something that I just really find interesting. Because he just kind of sat back and let all of the pawns do the work while he just kind of existed. It was pretty interesting. I liked him. He was a good character. And now I'm kind of torn about who I actually wanted to speak about at the end. Because Sagiri is just a really good character with really good development and she's another of the main roles where you get a lot of her content over all the other characters and get to see her come into her own throughout the series. But then the character of Shugen is also up there with just like my type of character where he's so determined in one specific aspect that it completely absorbs and defines his character. Where his entire thing is about straight justice and no exceptions. If you break the rules you're just done, you're dead, it doesn't matter, you can't argue, get out of here. And that's a really great character that I really like. But then there's also Rien, the like final Tensen boss, whatever, the, the character that's actually known as Tensen, who hit the entire character arc of that is you get to see this entire monster just existing and trying to obtain immortality and do all this stuff until the end where you finally get to see the motivation behind it all and what the actual end goal is. And then it makes the character feel a lot more human-like in that sense. And it's just a fantastic way to end the story with a more of a questioning like what would you do in that position and it's a nice little look into like morality and stuff in my opinion i don't know if that's the actual way it was meant to be taken but but like all three of those characters are just really good characters in my opinion because from chapter one you get to meet and be with sagiri and i don't know about anyone else but the entire time i was full on shipping her and gabby maru together they were a fantastic couple great friends it was just a great pairing between two people who weren't really in great positions mentally because she was struggling with her swordsmanship or whatever and actually executing people and Gabi Maru just didn't really know where he was going in life and they just kind of fed off of each other and built up into the characters that they were supposed to be and it, it's really good to see characters kind of feeding off of each other rather than having one character that's fully developed already that kind of leads charge kind of like how Shuga was where his entire being was just justice no question about it let's go and he's he's there to do his job and he's going to do what he was told which is kind of like how Shija was except like very polarizing opposites and considering that those two were together on the same team is just such a beautiful thing but hey, as far as characters go, I don't think any of them can top Gabi Maru, honestly. This video has already become way longer than I expected it to originally. So if it's not obvious by this point, I highly recommend reading or watching Hell's Paradise as it comes out. It is by far one of my favorite series to come out in the last 10 years. I absolutely adore just about everything about the series and highly, highly recommend it. I'm definitely going to have to make some more Hell's Paradise videos eventually. I'm a big fan of Yuji Kaku's work and Hell's 
Hell's Paradise is the exact reason why. I'd love to hear about your favorite character from the series or just what you thought of the series in general, because maybe I'm just delusional about these characters and how great they are. But I genuinely think that Hell's Paradise has some of the best characters in all of manga and anime. But anyway, I gotta go. Thanks for watching. Bye.